Hey everybody, if you're anything like me, you're getting just a little bit tired of all this doggone cold. So today I thought I'd help us provide a little bit of an escape, and we're going to kick things back to the 1920s to a proto-tiki drink that comes from Waikiki. And the name of this drink that we're going to do today is called the Holly... What? No, I was going to stick with that escape from winter thing. Yeah, I, I know we've got snow outside, but... Well, Jerry Thomas made one. So... Okay, fine. I'll make it. Uh, today we're not going to make a proto tiki drink. Today we're going to make an eggnog. Today on Drinking Through History, bonus features. So the eggnog. Uh, yeah, it actually does have eggs in it. And we're going to bring this down on a smaller scale. One of Jerry Thomas's uh, recipes is for like 12, 15 some odd people. Uh, it's even got stuff like Madeira in it. I haven't tried that. So we're going to just bring it down. Uh, even David Wondrich uh, brings it down on a, on a smaller scale like this. Um, so as far as your alcohols, you're going to have your choice between things like uh, whiskey or cognac. And then we're going to need some Jamaican rum. Uh, you can probably guess which one I'm going to go with if you're used to watching things. We're going to need some ice, going to need an egg, and then typically um, there would be uh, milk would be used in this, but you can use um, cream if you want to, and that's what I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using uh, cream instead of milk. And uh, instead of using Jerry Thomas used granulated sugar mixed with water, we're just going to make things simple and we're going to use some of our um, simple syrup that we've made. So to start things off, we're gonna take our mixing cup and we're gonna start with one ounce of our simple syrup. And this is actually a blend between my Demerara simple syrup and my just regular plain simple syrup that you can make with your white table sugar. So we've got one ounce of that going in. Next, we're going to crack our egg. Uh, you can use whatever size egg you want. Eggs of the time were probably a little bit smaller. This happens to be what I have on hand. I've got, this is a jumbo size egg, so a lot of shaking is going to be required. Uh, next, we're going to put in two ounces um, of your whiskey or cognac, and I am going to be using uh, Wild Turkey 101. Wild Turkey, um, it, it is a bourbon and it is higher proof. Um, this I only ever use for mixing in drinks. Um, the proto tiki drink that we were gonna do, that we'll do some other time, uh, this gets used in. So I got two ounces in there, um, and I use this for eggnogs as well. And then we're going to do one ounce of, of a good Jamaican rum, aged if you can get it. Of course, I, my standby is Appleton Estate. You could use something like a Smith & Cross if you want to, which is also a Jamaican rum, but that might be even more potent than what you want. So I've got my one ounce of Appleton Estate that goes in there. And then the last part of this, before we get to the end, we are going to go with three ounces of milk or cream. And in my case, I'm going to go cream today. Two ounces. Need one more. All right, I got my three ounces now of my cream in there. And like I said, you can use milk if you want to. And because of all of this that's in there, we're going to shake the Everloving Dickens out of this. Now, the egg does something in this, um, especially if you are using a higher proof uh, alcohol, like the Wild Turkey 101 is, is higher proof. Uh, the egg, like we found out in the Whiskey Sour, helps kind of cut down the volume of the alcohol bite, so to speak. So I'm going to shake the dickens out of this before we go on to the next thing. Seems contrary doing this when there's snow outside, but whatever. Tis the season. A lot of times guys will shake this till you can barely hold on to the shaker and that's what I'm attempting to do right now. A 
All right. Try to break the seal on her there. Then we're going to want to take our strainer. I'm going to strain it in one of my usual drinking glasses. You can do this into, you know, your regular 12 ounce tumbler too, if you want. And as this sits for a minute, you'll actually see a little bit of separation and you'll have a little bit of eggnogish foam on the top. And then to top this up, we are going to need a little bit of nutmeg, freshly ground if possible. You can buy, and this is, if you didn't know, that's actually what a nutmeg looks like uh, when it's not ground. Then you can find these at, uh, you know, if you can't find it at your store, you can get it on Amazon in a pack of like 12, and that'll be more than enough for what you're going to need. You're going to have egg or uh, nutmeg for quite some time. And so there you go. There is the... Uh, the eggnog, um, a play on what Jerry Thomas had in his uh, bar books, um, kind of brought down and adjusted with some modern stuff. Yeah, the nutmeg really helps bring it all together. Even if you don't like nutmeg, try it with the nutmeg first and then um, make it without and uh, See what you think. The nice thing about the eggnog, taking this historic approach to it, is you can adjust it different ways to your liking and tweak it versus making a great big bowl of for 15 some odd guests or whatever like that. You can tweak with whether you're using milk or cream, whether you're using whiskey or um, cognac, and you can even try the different um, um, rums as well too. So. That's all we got. We'll catch you guys later. Uh, we will be doing a Proto Tiki drink soon. Um, I'm Leif Alverson, your host. We'll catch you next time on Drinking Through History Bonus Features.